If you've ever felt intimidated by art supplies or are waiting for the perfect moment to try out the art supplies you have without worrying about what to make or even how to use them, you're in the right place. Because today I'm going to show you how to create a color swatch book to try out your art supplies, keep track of your favorites, and most importantly, have an easy and fun way to start creating now. Hey, I'm Lisa Sonora, founder of Visual Journal Studio, and I teach visual journaling as a creative outlet that supports your well-being and helps you make meaningful art. This is what my color swatch sketchbook looks like. It is a very small, thin sketchbook that has not watercolor paper in it, but it has thicker mixed media paper on it that's pretty smooth, no texture. I always love to experiment with different sketchbook for my visual journals, and this is just one I happen to have on hand when I needed to make a new color swatch book, so that's why I picked this one. You can use any size you like, whatever is easy for you to reference. So I like that this isn't too big. I can just have this really handy. I could even travel with it. The idea behind this is to be able to reference. This is your own reference book of colors. You can do it in fun, creative ways. So in Mexico, there's this line of paint that has all of these colors. I'm going to just show you three pages worth. And I wanted to swatch them all because I don't, I wouldn't really buy all of these just for myself, but I do for my workshops that I teach in person. I love for people to have a whole rainbow of colors to choose from. And on these, I wrote down the name of the color. For some of these darker colors, it would be better if I went over this with white marker. I just haven't done it yet. So that way, it's really easy to learn, oh, are there colors that are too similar to each other that aren't worth buying another one? Like these are so similar to my eye. So are these. Well, actually, that's a little bluer. But it's hard to tell in the bottle. And then you, you can make your shopping list right out of your palette book. Or if you have this with you when you go to the art store, you can see what color do I want to get next. So it's very practical. I also use it to test out different art supplies. I'm not so familiar with working with this art graph. It's like a little solid piece of graphite that you dip a wet paintbrush in. So I hadn't used that before, and I noted here that I did that over gesso, just to see how that would be. And then under here, yeah, I think I did with this with a brush. No, no, no. I used an Art Graph 6B graphite stick. So I should probably spell that out for myself so I remember. I also use these to document different color combinations that I really like. So this came from some paintings I was doing of flowers, and I just wanted to have a reference for that. Because you can never get the same colors going again, so it's a nice reminder. This was experimenting with some ink with acrylic paint. And again, here's another useful way to use these, which is to compare different brands of the same type of art supply. So these are solid tempera sticks, and I noted the brand name where I bought them and their website. So these are the Little Brian mini paint sticks. And then on the next page is the Mexican brand of tempera paint sticks that I could find. So how many colors were in the set, but it wasn't until I compared these, sort of, it's not exactly a side-by-side -side comparison, but these are definitely more pastel-y 
there's a, actually a white up here. You probably can't see it that well. They're much more pearlescent, almost metallic. Now, there are some metallics in this set. So if I compared this green to the same green, these are much more opaque and not all pearlescent. There's a few neons in this set as well. And so that way I can decide for myself, oh, which brand do I want to get? Because I can never remember. If you're working in your visual journal, you won't remember because you're just going to town working. So if you have more than one type of supply, it's just really helpful to document it. And I think this is a really fun thing to do, underlining the word fun, because when it comes to making art or even working in your visual journal, we can get so serious and it can start feeling like work. And that's why I like to have lots of activities that are available that are just pure play. You're not trying to make anything. You're not trying to do it perfectly. You're not trying to learn from a tutorial, for example. You're just having fun and making swatches. It's not serious. It's not, there aren't any consequences. You don't have to do it perfectly. You can see mine are so messy. Um, it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> It works for me and my purposes. And it's also so practical. Dogs have to have their say. It's such a practical way to keep track of your favorite supplies, take notes on your not so favorite supplies, to take shopping with you to see what you already have. I mean, I have this little tray of washi tape here, you could do something like put a, one strip of all of your washi tapes down to see what you already have. Just, and you know what? It's using up your supplies. You're not waiting for something important to say or some special occasion in order to use all of these wonderful good art supplies that you've collected. So keeping a swatch book is such a perfect way to do that. This is another example of how I'm using color swatches to test out a variety of yellows. This is just one example from my swatch book, but you can see I have a variety of different brands of a similar color cadmium yellow paint that I wanted to test out. So these are Everything from my favorite golden fluid acrylic to some gouache brands, as well as some other acrylic paints. What I did in some of these examples is paint right over the description of the brand and the color so that I could see how translucent the paint is. What I did was squeeze out a little bit of the paint from the tube or bottle onto a blank sketchbook page from my larger sketchbook. And that way I could paint sort of neat lines into my swatch sketchbook that you see over on the left. Doing the swatches this way also gives me a sense of not only what the colors look like, but also the consistency of the paint. How does it feel on the brush? How do I like using it? And then after it dries, since these are all acrylic base, how sort of plastic do the paints feel and look after they dry? If you're curious how visual journaling can help you create with more ease and fun, then I'd love to send you my free illustrated visual journaling guidebook. There's a link for you down in the description right below this video. Thanks so much for watching this week's video on how to create a color swatch book to test your art supplies. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss any future videos like this one.